Hello, hello. Hello. Hands of Anna Walker here with a fun project for What to Felt Wednesday that is specifically put together for you to do with the littles in your life. Now, this is a project that even a two or a three year old, probably three year old, could probably do with some supervision. Um, and it doesn't take very much at all. I've got probably more fiber than what I need to have here. But let me go through what we're going to use. We're going to use, you know, some bits and pieces of fiber. Okay. I've got fiber in flame colors because that's what I'm feeling this morning. I have a piece of pre-felt. Now, pre-felt is partially felted wool. You can still pull it apart. It's not completely felted. So don't mistake this for a felt sheet because this is something very special. Um, as we add the fiber on top and um, use a little soapy water and some massaging, rolling, these fibers will grab into this pre-felt because it's not fully felted yet. And so they'll become a single piece. So you need to have a little piece of pre-felt. I have a piece of cardstock and I use this as a loading device because we've also got a gallon size baggie here. I'm in my tray. I've got both bubble wrap and a bamboo um, mat. I think I'm gonna use the bamboo today, but you could easily use bubble wrap as well. And you don't have to use the baggie, but the baggie is to make sure that we're keeping the splash and soapy factor a little bit mitigated. So that's what we've got. Um, Trey, I think I said that, but let's just get started with this. Now, I've got the baggie underneath the piece of cardstock. Doesn't matter, we're gonna slide the piece as we create it. I'm gonna unzip the baggie though. That'll make it a little easier to get into. Um, we are going to create our little design on top of the pre-felt and then we're gonna use the cardstock to slide it into the baggie, flip it over, add some of our soapy water, press it down to make sure we've got everything nice and moistened down, and then we're just gonna agitate. So uh, let's get started. Now I've got Roy here, red, orange, and yellow, of the Roy G. Biv family. And I am just gonna play with some design here. Now, when you're laying, laying out a design, especially when you're laying it out on, on something like pre-felt, you wanna make sure that you're grabbing just little bits of wool to lay down. And, you know, like I said, I'm just doing very freeform here because I just wanna see, you know, what we can play with but you can make a particular design if you want. You can choose to, you know, draw a picture. Um, I recently saw a very cool video with um, a young one, probably three, maybe four, who was creating um, a painting of a creature out of the same process. And they simply, you know, just played with the fibers and added them where they felt like the fibers belonged. And then they wet felted it very much like we're going to do, although they did it outside and they did it inside a kiddie pool so that they could use their feet to um, create the wonderful felting action. I decided to work on a smaller scale. It got a little wet last night, and not that, you know, that wouldn't be perfect for what we're doing here. It's just that getting um, things set up, not knowing if it's gonna rain again, and having, you know, equipment outside where it might get wet, I just decided it was safer to do this. So you can see I'm just sort of randomly laying things out and my goal here is just to, you know, kind of have this color going from bottom to top. And I'm just using the wools. I'm gonna show you when I get done here how much wool we have left over because we had a lot more than we needed. 
Um, but I want to show you just how little it took to create this little layout. I'm just building it up a little bit at a time, seeing what we come up with here, and just having some fun with it. I'm going to leave some of these chunky here, because I think those chunks are going to give us some interesting texture. There's a nice chunk that can go in there. It's just about, you know, helping them play, helping them have some fun with this wonderful substance we call fiber. Seeing what it can do and just painting with the colors. And painting with something that's not paint. All right, a little bit more orange and then we'll have some red coming in. these chunks of orange. Just a little bit more. You can see on some of these, I'm just drafting the fiber a little bit, holding it just at one side and just gently drifting it down so that I have that sort of spread out feel. And I've used a combination of um, bats and rovings on this particular piece. So it really doesn't matter, you know, what state the fiber you're using is in. You could even use wool yarns if you wanted to and just have them sitting on top and playing with the colors. All right, one more bit of deep red here for the top. And just drafting some of these fibers down.
just want to put some extra little bits of movement in here. This darkest red. Okay. All right, so this is how much is left over. So we used about half of this. So we have our fiber painting laid out and it's pretty even. I'm, that's why I'm pushing down, I'm feeling to make sure that the fibers are fairly even across the edges here. I do want to add just a touch right here along this edge because we've got a couple of gaps here. I just want to make sure that we've got fiber to cover those potential little gaps. Mm, nope, I'm going to pull it off. I will deal with it afterward. I didn't like the way it looked. So, we've got our design made and now we're going to just slide it into our gallon size baggie. And then we're going to take the paper out. So we're just going to find a way to grab hold of our fiber and just slide the paper out. We've got a little bit of the fiber here. Just going to set it back in. All right, so now our fiber painting minus the paper is inside our baggie. And now what we're going to do is flip it upside down <clears throat> and we're going to add our soapy water. Now, y'all know that I've got my soapy water solution inside my old dishwashing liquid bottle. I'm squirting a lot of it in there. And I'm doing that for a reason because I wanna make sure that we can get everything nice and moistened. And so the next thing we do is just move all of that liquid throughout the entire piece so that we've got it nice and wet all the way down to the top. And you'll see that as I flip it over, we could see the water taking shape. We've got a nice coverage here and now it's just a matter of starting that agitation. Now I, I'm leaving the baggie open. You could close the baggie at this point in time but I find that leaving the baggie open allows for any excess water to be removed because we just want these wet. We don't want them floating all over the place. Now we do need a little bit of water on our hands or on the top here so that we can start rubbing our hands. Now this is where you could have some fun with your kiddos. You could put them in a pool and let them walk all over it. You could let them stomp on it in the bathtub. They could, you know, have a dishwashing uh, tray or a, a tub that's used for washing things up by hand and they can have this in front of them and they can play with pouncing their fingers all over or rubbing it and just have a lot of fun with the agitation portion of this project. And if your hands start to stick, add a little bit more moisture. This is a fun, soapy, um, very, you know, kid-friendly. I mean, you can even have them put bubbles on the top and they can paint with the bubbles and just run their fingers along. And all of this agitation is going to create the felting process that we need. They don't have to push hard, they just have to rub. And of course, we'll do this from the back as well. And 
it takes just a few minutes for them to start to see their painting come to be. And I can see from the inside here that our fibers are nicely wet all the way through the back. And the next part of this is either using the um, bamboo mat or using the bubble wrap to take and to start rolling your piece. And it's just a matter of rolling it for a little while. I would generally start with 50 rolls and you can use a pool noodle in the center or not. That is totally up to you. But just wrap it around. I'm gonna get rid of the bubble wrap here because it's making things slide. But we're just rolling it. Now I am going to, hmm, do I have anything here? I realize I need something to tie around this and I thought I had a tie here in the area. <laughs> <clears throat> Live video, that's what it's all about. Catching Anna up when she's forgotten something important, which she does. Let's see, I've got, <clears throat> give me just a second everyone. I'm just looking, oh, I've got my Velcro ties from my gentle roller machine right here. I will use a couple of those. <clears throat> These have quickly become my favorite thing to secure felting when I'm rolling because it's elasticized and it's got Velcro on it, so it stays put. And there are no knots that I have to worry about untying afterward. It's just a matter of securing it, and then we're ready to roll. Just that easy. And you can see a lot of the water is gonna come out as we're rolling it. That's why I left the bag open. Because once we start the felting process, that excess moisture can become a bit of, of a problem, not always, but can. And it's not necessary to, you know, completely lose all of the moisture, but having the ability to collect any excess moisture that comes out when you're rolling. Um, if you don't have a tray like this, you can certainly just have a towel underneath and that towel can collect that excess moisture for you. You can also make it a little easier to roll because it is collecting that excess moisture and your hands aren't getting irritated. So there are a couple of different ways that you can do this that will you know, mitigate some of the mess factor. But I usually do about, I don't know, anywhere from 50 to 100 rolls. And then I'll take the, you know, unwrap this and I will turn our painting a quarter of a turn and then I'll do the same number of rolls. And then I'll take it out and turn it a quarter of a turn and do the same number of rolls. And I'll do that until I've gone from all four sides with the same number of rolls. Now I'm gonna call this 50, only because I have a little experience and I know about what it feels like when I get to that first marker. So. We've, gone, we've done our first 50. Let's take a look and see if I've got anything that's moved. Nope, it hasn't. So, turning a quarter of a turn, wrapping it back up. Now the moisture is gonna come out on this side because that's where the opening is to our baggie. And then wrapping and securing again. Oops, I got that backwards. Like I said, these Velcro ties are the bomb. And now we'll do another set of rolls. Now, this is where, you know, having the pool, the mini, you know, kiddie pool set up, 
um, can keep their attention a little longer because they can, you know, walk all over it and, and bounce and wiggle their toes, whereas they might get a little bored, especially the younger they are. They might get a little bored with all this rolling stuff. Um, but this is, you know, something to help them figure out the process and be part of the process. And creating with your kids is a great way to help encourage their creativity, to help their imagination take hold, and for them to learn techniques that, you know, will serve them well as they get older. It's just a lot of fun to create art with kids. Always has been, always will be. I'm using the bamboo mat instead of my usual bubble wrap because it's got a little bit more agitation factor to it. When you're rolling, you're not pushing down. You're not putting a lot of um, pressure on. You're just simply agitating. And having these extra little bits of, um, of areas between the pieces of bamboo stick helps that agitation process. I'm just spreading things out a little bit before we roll right back on up. But the bamboo mat just gives you a little extra agitation. Makes agitation makes the felting happen faster. It's all about agitation because what we're doing is the soapy water opened up the scales that are on animal fibers and the agitation is what's happening while we're rolling and while we're rubbing that gets those scales to connect together until they form felt. And then when we finish it, when we rinse it in hot soapy water, in the hot water, then cold water, hot water, then cold water, it closes those scales back up to where they form a fiber, um, a fiber fabric that's not going to unravel, not going to come apart. Felting in a nutshell. Open the scales, agitate, close the scales. That's it. out and do our final turn and then we'll take a look at our painting and see where we're at. I just like to take the opportunity to smooth anything out that needs to be smoothed out whenever I am switching directions and then we're just going to roll right back on up again and do this last bit of rolling and then we'll check. Now notice I try and keep my wrists straight and my fingers um, sort of splayed out that way I can, um, one, reduce the amount of repetitive stress to my fingers and my wrists. Um, that's where I've got a fair amount of arthritis and so keeping these areas open helps with that. It helps to keep it from getting aggravated. But also, and I'll go a little slow here, if I keep my wrists straight and my fingers out, I can do a full roll from my fingertips all the way to the base of the palm of my hand and that means I can get a nice roll and I can get the maximum amount of 
territory covered, for lack of a better term, with each roll that I do. It also ensures that I've got a tiny bit more pressure all the way along the entire length of this because it's going from here to here. And that way I'm getting all of that area covered with my hands being in this position. It's less tiring. Your elbow was designed to do this motion. Your shoulder was designed to do this motion. I always try and make sure that I'm sitting up straight with my feet flat on the floor. Ergonomic um, activity is the name of the game when it comes to felting. Make sure that you are moving in a way that helps your body and doesn't hurt your body. So we've done 200 rolls, 50 on each side, and we're going to take this out and we're going to take a look at our fiber painting and we're going to see how it looks. Oh, you noticed I was, I was acting a little aggressively, wasn't I? Yes, I was. Now, it's not completely felted, but it is felted to the point where we can, I'm gonna turn this this way because it doesn't fit my tray very well. Now I can give a little extra agitation directly on the surface to help complete this felting process, or in other terms, to full this piece. I'm gonna take it off the bamboo mat, and move these off to the side, and I'm just gonna work on the towel here. And I'm being aggressive because I can be aggressive now. The fibers have connected, and now I am just encouraging them to connect and complete their felting process. Now I am noticing that I've got some gaps where I can see the pre-felt coming through. I'm not concerned about that, nor should you be. I mean, this is a project that we're doing with our kiddos, and so you don't have to have it perfect. I'm gonna roll this in the bamboo mat without the plastic, okay? Because this is part of the fulling process. And the fulling process is the latter part of the felting process that helps those fibers just connect and solidify their connection in place. Having it out of the plastic gives us a little bit more agitation against those bamboo sticks that are in my mat here. And that additional agitation helps to complete our felting process here. And I'm gonna unroll it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it a quarter of a turn. And then we'll roll it up again. And notice, I'm not doing 50 this time. I'm just doing a few rolls with our bamboo mat and our felted painting here. Just realized that my baggie was sitting on my laptop. Moisture and laptop, probably not a good combination. Pull it out. Now, I don't know if you can see, but I can see that the fibers, I'm seeing them sort of shadow through on this side now, whereas I didn't when I first started this little bit of additional rolling that we're doing here. So I think our piece is gonna be complete when I get done with these next two sides. And we'll be ready to rinse this in hot water, then cold water, then hot water, then cold water to get the soapy water out of it. You can um, soak it in a vinegar water solution if you like. I don't always do that, sometimes I do. Um, the vinegar will change the pH of the fibers, um, which the pH was changed when we added the soapy water to them. And it'll help sort of lock the fibers into this felted place that we've created. And our last bit of rolling
just going to scrunch it up. This is another part of the process. Another part of the filling process. And yeah, I have to be pretty sure that this is felted together. Otherwise, those fibers would be coming loose everywhere. But we've been working on this for 30 minutes. I mean, that's it. And I did a little talking in the in-between. But let me get the soap off my hands. Let me move the bamboo mat out of the way. And there is our fire painting. Complete. 30 minute project with the littles. A little bit of wet felting fun and a little bit of creative fun. So that is our what to felt for this Wednesday. Next week, I have scheduled uh, five different uh, throwback videos that are from when I began to go live in March of 2022, 2020, when everything got locked down after um, spring break in March of 2020. And I went live, not with felting stuff, but with kids' art projects. And as it is the 1st of June, and I did a kids' project today, um, I thought that it might be a good thing to have some kids' projects for next week as the kiddos are on spring or on summer vacation for most of us, um, at least in this area of the country. And you've got uh, five really fun videos next week that you can uh, have some fun with the kids with. And if you want to be notified what's going to be coming up and what um, items are going to be talked about during the week on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, or next week what videos I've chosen for the throwback week, head over to stabthingsintoexistence.com and trust me with your email and that way you'll be notified each week of what I'm going to be talking about and that way you can either tune in or catch it later. So that's what I have for today. We've got a wonderful little fire painting that we created in a baggie in 30 minutes. Have some fun with the kiddos and have a great Wednesday everyone and I will talk to you again tomorrow. We'll see you later. Bye.